In this video installment, we'll be talking about the consequences of any kind of acquisition in the church compound. The BMR Seals Metro Line near our church, according to the DPR, is described as follows. Leaning to the RHS of Hosu Road on Campbell Road and passing through the Richmond Road on the LHS, which means Nama Metro's line ideally should not affect our church by itself. Even with its deviated plan, it will traverse at a depth of more than 25 meters under the ground. Although the movement of the tunnel boring machine or the TBM is at very close proximity, we are okay with them passing through, hoping and praying nothing happens to the structure. Having said this, we are not against the BMRCL. We all want the metro station, which is why the church voluntarily gave them vital commercial property. BMRCL is misleading the public by saying we are against it. All we ask is not to encroach into the church property inside. We have suggested many options which we will be discussing in part D. But the most viable suggestion would be, we all know that the BMRCL reduced the length of the Velara Junction Metro Station from 300 meters to 232 linear meters. Instead of reducing the station by 68 meters on the south side of the station, which encompasses a patch of barren land, they can reduce the same 68 meters on the other side where a church will be untouched and all of us will benefit from it. There are many more options and suggestions that the BMRCL haven't even tried to explore. That will be covered in the next video installment. But instead, the BMRCL plans to subjugate its dominion inside the church compound, from the petrol bunk corner to the corner of the parsonage in the south, right across the church compound, grazing the elevation of the church and moving inwards into the parish hall and fully raising the Arpana school, thereby not only vanquishing us from our very own church, but also endangering the structural integrity of the church building. For those who are not aware, Nama Metro plans to cut open the land inside the church to a depth of 25 to 30 meters. That is almost 100 feet or about the height of an 8 to 10 story building. I'm sure we are all aware of the many boulders and rocks present underneath the soil. After all, Bangalore is situated on a plateau. Nama Metro will have to clear all these rocks and boulders by brute force. This can send shocks and vibration to the building which can just cause it to crumble. If not anything, the All Saints Church, known for its high, acutely angled, pinched roof, will not survive. The roof is made up of blacks of terracotta tiles that will not last a day during the process. I'm sure we've all seen these piling machines hammering its way into the earth. Well, we've all felt the shock, sound and vibrations, let alone the impact. Well, if Metro does take this land, regardless of whether it's temporary or permanent, this piling machine will be the least of our worries. With all this noise, vibration, dust, slush, etc., how are we going to have any service here? Provided the church building still stands, what happens to our privacy and safety when we worship in a factory or a workshop? That part, we have an old age home inside the church compound. What happens to the old age home? And what happens to its inhabitants? The Arpana school, the school for children with special needs. What happens to this? What happens to the children? The BMRCL had lied about transplanting trees instead of using the words translocating some trees. How can we trust them to arrange a building for the children? They are as of now in contempt of court by deviating the DPR for phase two. And they seem to be the least bit bothered. How do we hold such an entity accountable? How do we know they'll even return the land after the construction in the next 8 to 10 years even, and not erect number one Hosu Road Mall in its place. Can we trust their credibility at all? We have already offered so much land on a silver platter. Now they come for more. They say they have paid for the land, but which congregation member here is worried about the compensation? I'm sure the church authorities agree that the property is worth much more than 60 crores. The BMRCL, plans to have its ventilation shaft inside the church compound 
where the Arpana building now stands. This is not only the desecration of our holy place, but also a complete mockery of the church because a holy place will now hold a ventilation shaft expelling harmful gases and emissions. Emissions like fumes from the battery rooms, HVAC or ACs, diesel generators, circulators, etc. Ironically though, the space that used to be a carbon sink will become a source of pollution. Now, about the temporary acquisition, let me illustrate it like this. We give them an entire four-tier cake, and if at all we get the cake back, we get only the icing, not the right kind of icing we are all looking for. Secondly, this isn't a piece of cake. It is our church land that comprises of a church building which can accommodate about 250 to 300 members. We have a congregation strength of about 550. Where do the others sit? As of now, the spillover is being looked after by the seating outside on the lawn. And a mini ecosystem of over 200 trees provides shade and shelter for us. Nama Metro claim they'll finish the project in four years. Well, for a period of four years, they want to cut all these beautiful trees. Over 140 trees come into their firing line. Although they talk about translocating, not all qualify for the same. And from the ones that do qualify, rarely do any survive. And even if they do survive, they translocated to a place outside the city. After the construction, if they do give back the land, we will be able to grow only a few flower-bearing plants and maybe alone. We won't be able to plant trees or construct any building in future because we will have only a few feet of soil. I'm sure all of us are aware of the tree that fell down inside church during the last month's rains. The loss of that one tree made a huge difference in temperature inside the church. Imagine more than 140 trees being felled for the same. Now, let's imagine the metro gives us back the land after constructing the station underneath. Their slab or roof will be a few feet from the ground level. We know concrete absorbs heat. If you thought felling 140 trees is bad and would make the campus warmer, think again because the slab covering the entire acquisition is going to absorb a lot more heat. It's not only the heat that we should be worried about, it's the rain too. In the past, we've had trees and plants that would absorb water and keep the soil together. After the station is complete, we will have a concrete slab that will not let the water percolate down. Having said this, we know that the church is at a lower level compared to the road and the lawn itself. As of now, it is at least 500 mm lower. We have an annual rainfall of about 900 mm in the area, which means regardless of how many percolation pits we have in place, we will still have water ponding and flash flood in the area. And this will be in tune of about 500 mm. Now that is provided the BMRCL does not increase the height of their surface. About the finance, we will not be able to generate any income for the church through the parish hall. Also, the members will not be able to enjoy benefits and discounts for the use of the parish hall for their own family functions, which cannot be compensated by any means. If at all the land is given for temporary acquisition, we will get back barrel land with someone occupying the land at a subterrain level. As of now, BMRCL is paying the church rent, which may be in tune of about 1.5 crores a year, where they are legally supposed to be paying for the subterrain engagement. I'm sure at this point you are all wondering the BMRCL is a large organization and must have thought this through. Well, they did. Hence the DPR, but they have deviated. In fact, their plans or project is not sanctioned. They are illegal and they are proceeding with utmost bigotry. It is up to us to unite and safeguard this 150-year-old church. The land that they give back after temporary acquisition will be like a patient in coma on life support. Should we alienate our church? Is this the legacy that we'd want to leave behind for the future generations? <laughs>